Now that we are back here, uh, I would like to ask uh, Kristen Brosbol. She is the president for parliamentarians for the Global Goals. She's going to give us a closing remarks. Thank you, Gabriela, and thank you everyone for uh, joining the breakout sessions. I think that was uh, great to uh, have the opportunity also to dive into some of the specific elements of the budgets that uh, concern us. Um, so um, let me just uh, give a few general remarks on what we have heard today. I think in the, in the three presentations in the beginning, uh, it was of course very clear what is the role of parliamentarians here in making sure that there is alignment between our global commitments uh, and our national uh, budgets and the, and the uh, role of parliamentarians in making sure that there is uh, a coherence uh, in, in what we have agreed internationally and what we do on a national uh, basis. I think it was very interesting to see both the very specific example uh, of how uh, the WHO is working with parliamentarians to also engage them in uh, the uh, move towards uh, universal healthcare coverage and to see how these concrete tools can be put in place uh, with regards to health. And I think we can definitely learn also uh, generally from that experience how we can uh, work together to ensure uh, that this commitment from parliamentarians. I think we also uh, saw some interesting examples of um, uh, from Dr. Hege on how uh, we have uh, different countries have approached uh, SDG budgeting and that um, we see uh, some uh, critical steps towards monitoring uh, SDGs and mapping SDGs up against our national budgets. But also a really important point that uh, this, of course, needs to be followed up by uh, parliamentarians in terms of making sure that these monitoring systems and mappings are also part of the political debate, because what, what is the worth if it's not actually put into uh, the actions of parliamentarians uh, in that uh, follow up. And then I think it was very refreshing to have a specific uh, idea uh, put uh, on the table today uh, to use these um, uh, funds that may be uh, uh, at, by the end of the year not, have not been put in use and see whether it could be an idea for uh, parliamentarians to see if we could actually uh, work to establish these SDG funds uh, or a percentage of uh, these surplus uh, uh, budgets uh, to see if that could be put into use uh, with regards to SDGs. At least uh, I welcome that idea as a very specific uh, step that, that uh, each of you can take back to your parliaments uh, and see whether that would be an option. Um, but I think the point also was that uh, it is uh, critical for parliamentarians to be alert in, in the whole of the budget cycle, not just when it's debated in plenary, but actually both in the uh, building up of the budget proposal and in the actual execution and follow up on the budget. So uh, we all know uh, that there is a lot of work to do around the budget, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's an all year effort that needs to be put into that. Uh, I, so I sat in on one of the breakouts, which uh, had to do with the green recovery and, and the economic recovery. And uh, I just want to mention one point from that breakout. And that is the dilemma that many countries are in at the moment between the short term uh, handling of the pandemic and the economic consequences from the pandemic that many countries, we've heard examples from uh, Indonesia, from Bahrain and uh, elsewhere, to, which uh, pointed out that uh, right now there is an, an economic uh, uh, crisis, we have unemployment, we have uh, e economies that are really struggling. So how do you balance that short-term uh, recovery with the long-term recovery. And we had the pleasure of uh, uh, Professor Konduri in our uh, session stressing that uh, really we need to make sure that, that we have that long-term perspective because we can also see based on the experience from the pandemic that the costs of not 
being aware of uh, our own, um, like preparing for these events to happen, the pandemic or the climate crisis, the costs of not acting are actually going to be higher than, than uh, if we postpone them. So we need to think not in this contradictory terms between long-term and short-term, we need to make sure that we also calculate the long-term costs of not acting. And then there is of course, uh, an international uh, obligation to make sure that those countries that are struggling the most at the moment with their economies and still with handling the pandemic, which is not over, that we have these international financing mechanisms in place and that we use them and that we come to the assistance of those countries that of course need these investments on the short term, because of course there is that uh, that need for uh, immediate uh, uh, support uh, and also economic uh, support. So uh, we have an obligation both on the national level, but also on the international level to make sure that we address those needs. That was my humble attempt of summarizing this incredibly interesting um, uh, debate that we've had here today. And uh, uh, in for closing, I want to thank everyone who have joined our webinar uh, today, and I know many of you have also joined our previous webinars. Uh, thank you so much for spending your time and from parliamentarians for the global goals from uh, UHG 2030 and from UN SDSN. We want to thank you so much for engaging in this uh, very, very important dialogue for parliamentarians across nations can really uh, fertilize the debates that happen on a national level. And also, thank you so much for our experts who have joined us today and in the previous uh, webinars. This is an incredibly important uh, dialogue also with the scientific community and our expert community to support and inspire parliamentarians on how they can start to act for SDGs. Um, so uh, this was the last of this series of webinars. Uh, I can assure you that we will evaluate and also follow up uh, on this series of webinars and we don't know yet what we will do, but I'm sure that we will be collaborating in the future. Also uh, coming back to you all with uh, new and interesting ways for you to engage. I want to invite you all to, if you haven't done already, join parliamentarians for the global goals. You can go to pfgg.org and you can uh, uh, get involved there. Uh, we have uh, almost 100 in the network now from 40 plus countries and we would love to see more of you join that global network of uh, parliamentarians uh, also uh, to, uh, to keep this conversation going. So, and to be sure to uh, be reminded of future activities. So I hope you will join us there. Uh, and you will also receive a follow-up from today, hopefully also with the presentations from our panelists. I think Lauren has some of them already, but we would encourage uh, all our panelists to share them with Lauren so we can share them with participants. So that was all from, from now. Uh, again, thank you all for joining, for spending your time with us today and uh, have a wonderful uh, day or evening wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kirsten. And again, thanks to all of you for participating with us in these webinars. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you to the students that made interpretation possible. Thank you to all our teams and, uh, and support. And of course, if you have uh, more ideas, proposals, suggestions that uh, uh, for the next series of webinars, they're going to be, of course, welcome. And yes, you're going to receive all the information. So please keep in touch, keep close, and we are going to continue these conversations. We, we know that dialogue is very much needed to build a better planet.